Hey everyone, hope you are all having a great Tuesday. Um, my name is Jeffrey Brown. I am a webinar manager at GoDaddy Social. Um, GoDaddy, we work with local businesses, entrepreneurs, not only in the US, but across the world. You know, really making sure that you have that same great presence, but that same great way of communicating with your customers online, um, just like you do in person. Y'all, I'm so excited to be here with all of you today. We're gonna to be going over six ways to make social media easier for your restaurant this spring. Now, I want you to think about this and whether you're a restaurant, you're a bar, you're a cafe, you know, you're a business that maybe just opened, you know, six weeks ago, maybe you're a business that opened 20 years ago. Um, you know, definitely wanna make this webinar as interactive as possible just so you know. Um, definitely feel free to let us know what you think about this webinar in the chat box. Also feel free to put your questions in there as well as we go along, we'll be answering those once the webinar is over with whatever time that we have left with Q&A. Um, but I definitely want you to have fun with this webinar as well. You know, use this as a chance to network, you know, use this as a chance to learn. Um, but you know, this is also a chance for me to learn from you as well. Um, you know, you're the experts in the hospitality industry, whether you're hotel, restaurant, cafe, what have you, a nightclub, you know, definitely excited that you're all here. And you know, you're here to learn six ways to make social EDM easier for your business this spring. So like I said, my name is Jeffrey Brown. I'm a webinar manager at GoDaddy Social. Um, today we're gonna be going over, like I said, six ways to make sure that you're knocking this out of the park for spring. You know, as the winter is thawing in some places, I, I know there's still snow on the ground in some places, but you definitely wanna make sure that you're warming up your specials, you're warming up your audience, you know, to your new business this spring. Um, whether, you know, like I said, you've been in business for 20 years, six weeks, you definitely want to make sure that you're going to be knocking all these strategies out of the park. So we're going to first be diving into how to build your brand. So in this section, um, I'm doing this a little bit differently. I, when I talk about your brand, I know we usually talk about like your logo, your colors, you know, making everything consistent. Um, I wanted to take it a little bit step further. Um, you know, this is 2021. I feel like by now, you know, most businesses, you should be looking at, hopefully you have a website or, you know, you're looking at building one. So, you know, definitely want to make sure that that's an extension of your brand. You know, we always say, oh, your website's not always the first place that your audience is going to land. Well, you know, sometimes it might be the only place they land. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that you have that consistent with your brand as well. It matches. So we're going to be diving into that. Um, in the second part, we're going to be going over how to use quarters and sprints to plan your marketing. So I want you all to think about your content as in savable, like saving content shareable content that you know your audience can share with their friends their colleagues and also content that people can comment on what's going to really drive your audience to stay engaged with your business not only to visit your business again and again but you know to make sure that you're staying top of mind on social media as well after that we're going to dive into how to invest in the right tools for the job you know sometimes you do have to seek outside help you know to help you with your social media sites your website maybe a loyalty program there's no shame in that um, I know sometimes we think, all right, if I do these things, this is going to happen automatically. That's just not the case sometimes. Um, social media is tricky, um, but it's also a lot of fun as well if you dive into it and you look in your metrics as well. So that brings us into um, well, our fifth point um, where we're going to focus on our attention on the results, but we're also going to talk about how to develop those relationships and partnerships. And last but not least, you know, making customer service first. We're going to be going over you know, platforms that are important to you platforms that you probably all know when you, you're probably like, oh, we're probably gonna go over Yelp. Yes, we are. <laughs> but we're also gonna just make sure that you know you have that same level of customer service online, just like you do in person. I know some states are already open, some states are slowly opening back up. You definitely wanna make sure that as you're doing that, you're having that same great presence that you built up over this last year and a half, and you're carrying that well into this next year as well. Making sure that you're staying present with your audience, um, but more importantly, you're staying engaged with them and they know that you're ready to stay engaged with them as well. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Um, so our first topic that we're gonna dive into is building your brand. So one thing I want us to think about is, and I'm, I'm gonna have to put my phone here because I do have to remember these poll questions. <laughs> because I wanna make sure that we also ask them as well. So I wanna ask, um, how many of you use social media currently? Um, we're gonna pop up a poll here um, in just a little bit, but yeah, definitely let us know how many of you are actually using social media currently. 
you know, let us know. I almost feel like Alex Trebek, but I know we're not going to be answering any questions. But, you know, this just gives us like a good sense of, you know, how you're using social media, you know, what you're really doing online um, and things like that. So we definitely want to make sure that you're able to. OK, so 100 percent of people are using social media. OK. Awesome. All right. So we're first going to click out of that. All right. Okay. Okay. I want to make sure that everyone can see my screen. Build your brand. Sorry. Okay. So one of the first things that you want to make sure that you're doing is that Sorry about the delay here, everyone. Jeffrey, you may want to just uh, close out the quick tab poll on your screen. It looks like that's what we're pulling from. Yeah, I'm trying to actually find that tab really quick. And it's not showing up on my screen. Sorry, y'all. You could also stop sharing your screen and reshare it. Okay. There we go. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to do that for next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. Let's kick this thing back off. All right. So building your brand, you definitely want to make sure that your brand is like a big part of like who you are as a business, a business in your community, you know, your local area. So you definitely want to make sure that you have a great brand. And one thing is that is your website. So um, I'm actually looking at this business called Paperboy. They're located in Austin, Texas. They started out as a food truck. And then this is their first brick and mortar location. It's really pretty inside. They have a really great rooftop. They have a really good downstairs like dining area. You know, really socially distant, spaced out, everything like that. But one of the things that you think about, and I'm going to say this as well, is that you, when you get to your social media sites, you want to make sure that everything is there, right? So you want to make sure the name, phone number is all there. So you're going to do the same thing on your website as well. So this is really not only talking about menu convenience, but also accessibility, organization, uh, but more importantly, making sure that it's also flowing with your brand and it's consistent as well. And you're also able to update it easily. So just going through, like one of the first things that you can see is it's very eye catching. So that's one thing that you definitely want to think about when you're building out your website is maybe you have photos rotating. And sometimes you do hear things like, all right, when I look at the menu, maybe I don't want a PDF or maybe I just want a scrolling menu. That kind of goes back and forth um, between businesses, but also how you want to make sure that you're portraying that online. So then I went down here and I was like, you know, I actually want to make a reservation. You know, while I'm working from home and now that I can actually visit um, some restaurants here, um, you know, I'm going to take advantage of that right now. Visit a local restaurant, you know, spend some money there. So I actually booked um, a reservation for this week. And so I think I was trying to decide like which day I was gonna go. So as you can see right here, I'm just waiting to figure out, you know, what time I can go. I'm like, all right, I know I'm doing a workout class that morning. Um, so then I can go around like 8.30. So just showing as I'm booking the reservation, just how easy it is. And also having a third party integrated like Resi as well. So definitely making sure that your menu one is convenient to the accessibility, you know, is organized, everything like that. I also can see that, you know, party of two, it's just going to be me. I'm going to be downstairs and um, they have like some CDC rules and regulations of what's going on. Um, clearly, I've been here before and I also have a Resi account. <laughs> so my number are populated here. 
They gave me an access code. I think at first I was like, wait, what's going on? And then <laughs> I was able to enter that access code and finally book my reservation. And these are just things to confirm um, as well as kind of just make it easy. So this is just through the third party. This is nothing through paperboard or anything like that. I know, and, and this is the great thing I love about having this third party in here is like, what's the occasion? I could have said, you know, just a good time, birthday, anything like that. And they're like, unknown guest, <laughs> oh, but Jeffrey Brown. But yeah, um, everything right here, I'm done. I can close out. And it's just a really great spot. They have really great food and it's a great place to go and work and hang out. So also ease of transaction, you know, just checking out if I want to um, get something delivered as well. You just want to make it really easy and simple for your customers, but also your future customers as well. Um, I think about this um, as a little kid. My mom, you know how your parents like teach you how to clean little things like that. And one thing she always taught me, she's like, Jeffrey, you never want to leave your space. Though you want to leave your space, you know, the way that, you know, you come into it so clean. And so that's how you definitely want to think of like your social media sites as you want to keep them clean and consistent, but also easy to navigate as well. Because think about this, you're not just doing this for yourself. You're not just making them consistent just for you, the business owner or your employees. I mean, they know how to navigate. They know what to order. You're making it easy for your future customers that may be coming and, you know, about to order something or your current customers that have been coming to you for 20 years and it's just an upgrade. So definitely making sure that you're making it easy for your current customers, but also keeping your future customers in, in mind as well. So of course, building your brand and keeping it consistent, going along with that Paperboy um, case study is right here, you can see the brand is consistent. You see that same logo, that same kind of print that you just saw on their website just a few slides ago. So something that's very consistent, something that's very easy. Um, and that's, I think, the fun about social media is once you start making sure that your stuff is consistent, you kind of see your brand not only come alive, but it just looks really pretty as well. And right here, they're a breakfast and brunch restaurant only. Um, they have a brick and mortar that is now open. You should just walk to their little food truck and it was amazing. And they only had like a few menu items and now their menu is beyond like, it's just really great, it's awesome. They have a really great beet toast as well. Been on a beet kick recently. Um, you know, they have their business hours. So just like you would treat like your review sites like Yelp and Google, um, you definitely want to make sure you're treating your social media sites the same. When are you open? Where are you located? How can I get in touch with you? And I love this right here, a scrambled egg, coffee, a cactus, you know, just symbolizing Texas. Order online, Little Billy, and they also have their Texas method. Like, you have the opportunity to put a link across all of your social media review sites. And I think that's one thing that's really beautiful about social media is that you get to connect with your audience even more so. So where do you want your audience to navigate? Because I'm going to be honest, as a consumer, we're not going to know what you want us to do until you tell us to do it. So tell your customers what to do. That's not you being manipulative. It's you steering your customers in the right direction. And not only that, you're also socially selling. Um, when I think about, you're like, oh, you don't want to push promotions or sales. We're going to talk about that in just a second. How you socially sell online, how you make this interactive for your audience, and how you make it fun for you as well. And being consistent, their brand, very on point, very consistent with the colors, the tones. It just it sets a whole vibe, it's a whole mood of how you know you'd want to do breakfast or brunch, easy, casual. Maybe it's a little bit early, maybe it's like a little bit in the afternoon, you know, maybe it's a little bit later. You might gotta sleep in. And you know, it just gives a really good aesthetic of their business. You know, they're not just showing pictures of, you know, just food. Just in this grid right here, you maybe see a couple of pictures of food. You're really seeing pictures of their restaurant. And I think that's one thing that a lot of businesses, pretty much every business forgets to do, is we forget to paint that experience for our audience on social media. You know, now so more than ever, people are not just able to walk into your business. You have to literally tell them what to do. You have to guide them to that space. So this will probably be the table that I'm gonna be sitting at, you know, this two person table. Um, probably will get, you know, um, an iced coffee or something. This is their line where somebody is masked up. This is also where you can see people are eating brunch, fit it for four people. You know, they're painting that experience. They're painting that picture for their customers, not only their current customers, but also their future customers as well. Using quarters and sprints to plan your marketing. 
When I think of spring, I well now like living in Texas, like the first thing I think about is crawfish. And then I'm like, oh no, those little crawfish. And I'm like, well, you know, they are good with the little potatoes, corn, all that little stuff. So that's great. Um, but I also think about the heat. Cause right now, like we're getting like a nice spring and it's beautiful, it's great. Um, I got up this morning, went to go work out. You're probably thinking like, I got up at six o'clock. It was like light, but dark out. And it was really cool out. And it's been like that right now. So you definitely wanna make sure you're planning seasonally. And the best way that I can kind of do this is like in quarters and sprints. And one thing that you wanna do is you have to tell your story. Remember, we're talking about our brand, but we're also talking about making social media easier for you. You already know your business, you already know your brand, then think about that and put it on social media. So if you're looking at the example on my left, this is Irene's, very Instagrammy, but also fun. Um, a very well lit business. They have a lot of graphics. It's beautiful. It's I don't know how to explain it. it. It's just very picturesque when you walk in, but it's also a good time. It's loud. It's fun. It's very millennial Generation Z um, vibe. So when the Bachelor was going on, of course, you know businesses. You know we're trying to figure out how to connect with an audience. You know right now in this pandemic. You know while we're dealing you know, with businesses slowly opening, some businesses, you know, have been open. So, you know, how can we connect with people? We have to dial in what's trending right now. So a way that you can do that is by telling your story through what's trending. So I like this example right here with Irene's Austin. The Bachelor has Matt James. We have Kendrick Dial right here. He's holding all the roses. Come by the free roses and rosé specials all night long. Let's end the dramatic season with the bang because the Bachelor was Matt. So they made it, you know, with play on words, make it fun, make it interesting. So as you can see, you know, bucket your content like this. You're not just putting out content just to tell content. You're also not publishing content just to tell your story. You're publishing content that can be saved, that can be shared, but that also has a way that um, people can comment on it. So just like in this example, Austin and Weird Life blog, emojis, Hungry Mandy, um, Jilly Bean, you know, a couple of replies. Um, all set, Austin, love this. Just a different way to make sure you're getting engaged, but also telling your story. And also over here with this example from Facebook with Condor Chocolates, you know, as spring arrives, you know, we think about dates, weddings, different times that, you know, we may be getting together or sharing things from a distance. You know, chocolate always brings people together. Love chocolate. It's great, it's amazing. Except dark chocolate, not the biggest fan of some baking cookies. That's here nor there. Um, but to tell your story, give a little bit of background. Don't just say, all right, here's our chocolate, buy it. Nobody wants to buy your chocolate like that. Tell your actual story. Get people excited about who you are. Did you know that we roast all of our coffee? And they give an example of like where they roast their coffee from and they tell about how they're from Ecuador. Um, they roast right here in Athens. And you know they also have wholesale options. So definitely making sure that you're not just telling your story online, but you're also being personable as well. Give your audience a reason to visit you, not just a reason just to buy your merchandise and just to come once. Give them a reason to visit you, ask questions. That's what you want when people come into your business. You want them to be asking buying questions. You want them to stay longer in order to increase that chance of them possibly buying more things. So definitely making sure that you're telling your story, you're carrying out that experience you know, weigh it like all through your social media sites as well. So love Instagram stories, they're so much fun. And a great thing that you can do is, you know, use Instagram stories right now. And so this is just an amazing way to do so. Um, Polly's in Athens, Georgia, you know, 4321, $4, um, $4 Bloody Creatures, um, $3 Mimosas, $2 Mimosas, number one place to be Polly's. So just making it really easy and really simple in their audience, but also, you know, really telling their story authentic, authentically. Sorry, choking my words right now. But you also want to make sure that you're talking about, you know, your new products and events, but you're not doing it in a way that is just throwing sales down someone's throat. That's not how you want to do it. You definitely want to make sure that when you're sharing online, you're sharing things that are going to be inviting to your audience as well. So share in the moment content, make sure you're posting about your products, your events, and your specials, but do so sparingly. You know, um, just like they say with your sweets or with anything, do so sparingly, even though love some sweets, love some baked goods, 
but you know you definitely want to make sure that you're doing that sparingly just like how you're posting you want to make sure you're thinking um, how to get real with your Instagram stories and how to post them at the right time as well one thing you also want to consider is sharing the moment content love great content I um, took a picture actually earlier this morning leaving my workout went to Trader Joe's went by the grocery store grabbed some tulips you know but I took a really cool picture in, um, in my little grocery bag, like, you know, my, re my reusable bag, put Tuesday on it, upload it to my Instagram stories. And everyone's like, oh, is that for me? And I'm like, okay, everyone, like, calm down. <clears throat> but it was something just in the moment. And those are always just fun little pictures. You know, I'd worked out, I went to the grocery store, grabbed some fresh flowers. Definitely make sure you're doing that with your business online. Love this example right here. Yellowtail collar, papaya salad, shallot for fairy. Um, period, period, just easy, simple, but they're getting that natural light. This is like that 10 o'clock, 11 a.m. kind of light that's just coming through their window right now that it's great to use natural light um, when you're talking about things that you're going to be, you know, sharing for later on in the day. Things that are on your menu currently, you know, take pictures of chef specials and, you know, upload those, you know, around lunchtime. Get people excited. Get people hungry. You know, people are like, oh, I got this sad salad today, you know. Maybe I can go somewhere and get a steak salad later, or maybe I can go get some sushi later. You know, really make sure that you're not just putting out something. Remember, you're paying that experience, you're making them hungry, you're creating that fear of missing out for them. Next, you wanna make sure you're, you know, incorporating that user-generated content. No matter who you are, what kind of business you have, really lean into your customers. When you lean into your customers, when you use their content, that just gets them more engaged with your business, number one. It also humanizes your business. And also, number three, it gives you a chance to not work as hard. If we're going to talk about ways to make social media easier on your business, this is where you're able to incorporate user-generated content for your local business. So this example right here, ATX Cecilia, Easy Tiger on South Lamar, a kid's win with a little tiger playground. Love this. One big thing right there. And even better when you run into a little friend from school and it runs into an unexpected play date. So number one, this is a great place for to come for families. Um, number two, you know that they're going to have a playground. So that's free advertising right there. And number three, this has already been tagged because she put the at Easy Tiger ATX. Easy Tiger saw this. You know, they were probably like, hey, ATX Cecilia, do you mind if we use this photo? She probably said, yeah, sure, why not? uploaded this to their Instagram story. Easy, boom, and simple. And you know, this is free publicity for that business. And this is just you using great user-generated content, but also you working smarter and not harder, and also you saving that time. So don't be afraid of incorporating user-generated content across your social media sites like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, show behind the scenes. Love a good behind the scenes moment, you know, especially from TV shows. I don't know how many of us got into WandaVision on Disney Plus. Any fans? Any fans out there? Um, just <laughs> was so cool. But you know, most shows, most businesses, you know, they you like to give it behind the scene. The reason why people love behind the scenes is because it breaks down that barrier that we have built up of like, oh, social media. It's we're buying our followers. You know, we have this fancy equipment in the background that we're doing. No, we have our chefs with their videos that are on the line while they're possibly, you know, cutting up some vegetables, prepping up some things. You know, they want to get it behind the scenes. We don't want to get some robotic, you know, this is behind the scenes. This is our fridge. We know what everyone's fridge looks like. We know that you want to organize it a certain way. You know, give us a day in the life of one of your chefs. Show us behind the scenes of your owner. Maybe you're building a new location. You know, show us the progress of that location. Take us behind the scenes. Make your Instagram stories work for your business and not against you. This is your chance to honestly stand out, but also your chance to really truly connect and tell your story. So we're talking about building your brand. We're talking about making sure you're planning in quarters and sprints. We can't always plan, but you know, we've seen that within this past year and a half. Um, but one thing that we can plan us for is, you know, the unexpected. So this is when you do lean into that user generated content and a way to plan in quarters and sprints is, you know, using content just like this. Um, Super Rica Text Max says, hotcakes bigger than your head is the best reason to get out of bed. <laughs> hey, rhymes. Dining begins on the patio and in the dining room at 10 a.m. at South End and Strawberry Hill. 
So notice how they're also, you might think, well, should we keep this short and sweet? Sometimes, yes. Also, don't be afraid to give some context. If you have multiple locations, please be specific because I'd be so upset if I got up early and I did, and I knew that this location was opening at 10 and then got there and opened up at 11. Be kind of disappointed. So make sure that you differentiate that. Remember, your social media sites, your websites, your review sites, an extension of your business is your brand. So right here, they're going to say Houston, Nashville, Krog, Avalon, Buckhead, and Battery with social distancing measures in place at all locations. Order to go, order delivery through, link and buy, or remember, give your audience something to do. Look at this pancake. She's smiling. She's about to dig in. She's pro she probably finished that. You can already tell it's bigger than her head. But I love this right here with user-generated content. Use a great hashtag. Use a branded hashtag. Hashtag Superica Tex-Mex. And they give credit with the photo icon, the camera, to Casey Samuel Bikini. You know, boom. Right here. Old Thousand in Austin, Texas. You can't just limit user-generated content to one platform. That's just like limiting engagement just to one place. Don't just respond to reviews that are just positive. Respond to everything. Don't just post on one platform unless it's just not working for you. Making sure that you're experimenting. That's the beauty of social media. You're not going to know if it works for you if you don't try it. Um, so definitely make sure that you're dipping your toes in a little bit of everything right here. Y'all have heard of Fried Chicken Friday. I mean, that hashtag, who knows? I mean, hashtag Fried Chicken Friday. I mean, if you sell fried chicken, you might need to use this. Yeah, us either, but we're making it a big thing. Come and join us at our Burnett location. Remember, differentiating you know, your different locations. Again, great user-generated hashtag example right here, ATX Food Chronicles. Celebrate holidays and showcase your values. How many of us celebrated International Women's Day? Show of hands, you know, let us know in the chat box. Um, you know, how many of us celebrated, I think, it, what was it, National Beer Day not too long ago? National Pizza Day? I think there's National Pizza Month. And I, May is, I think, National Barbecue Month, or June is, I believe. It's one of the two months. Um, if you're not celebrating these holidays or if you're not aware of these, this is the right section and I'm excited about this because, for example, with Squeak Club, they make macarons. So happy National Macaron, aka Ron, Ron Day. Here's a homage to some of our favorite Ron designs, faces and characters we've done over the past three years. That's a lot. With some of your faves. 644 likes, but the great thing I love about this post, and I wish I'd included this in there, is the engagement that it got. People saying, oh, I love this one. And the business was taking their time getting back to them. But when you celebrate holidays or hashtag holidays that are relevant to your business or where you showcase your value, your values and celebrate and lift up your workers, you know, that's going to cause engagement, but also a way for you to have content that's going to be shared. When you create content that's shareable, that's free advertising for you, but that also is putting your business up in front of, for example, 200 more people. The average person has 100 friends on Facebook, maybe more. This post got two shares that put this post into 204 more people than it originally set out to. They're also celebrating International Women's Day. You know, we want to celebrate our women. We want to celebrate our workers. We want to celebrate our people. People love people, and we love helping people. So make sure that you celebrate your people when you get the chance, whether that's a birthday, you know, first year of working, you know, new CEO, someone just had a baby, you know, someone just maybe they bought a house that they've been really working towards or something big happened. Celebrate that on your social media sites. Um, when I was working out today, I moved on to the next one. Um, our instructor was saying, you know, celebrate every little thing. You got to the workout this morning. You know, those little things. Celebrate that on social media. You know, you got your logo right. Promote that on social media. Say, hey, here's our new logo. Here we are. Celebrate that. And the great thing I love about when you celebrate the small things on social media, your audience, they recognize that and they engage that. And nothing's too small for this business. And I love this business. It's Monday night brewing in Georgia. And this hat, I need to snag one of those. And it says, if you're not currently looking at beer, the way our shift lead Trent is looking at brunch hat, then you probably want to reevaluate your Saturday. Grab this fruit forward sour pack with flavors of orange pineapple now on tap. So number one, they're not even promoting the hat itself. Jake Spear of the day says that hat. And they said, Still a few left in the tap room in our store online. 
took them a few seconds, maybe a minute to type that out. It goes a long way to engage with your customers. And not only that, but your customers, they're going to remember that. I wish, you know, we should have did this webinar yesterday. That would have been fun. There's one way to make a Monday better. Throw down a few frozen caps. <laughs> float, flavor floated with a liquor 43 vanilla or Barrow's ginger. See y'all soon. When we're talking about hashtags, when we're talking about tagging, make sure that you're using hashtags to stay relevant and engaged and online. So making sure that you're using popular hashtags like cocktails and cocktails of Instagram, happy hour bartender, but also localized hashtags as well, like Austin drinks, drink Austin, um, and also branded hashtags like Rama Tassia, Tassia family and what's my bowl. So definitely making sure that you're using hashtags to be beneficial for your business and work for you, not against you. All right, we're going to jump into this next section right here, our third talking point for the day. So investing in the right tools. Um, I will never forget being in like one of my first retail jobs um, in college. I was working for this local retail shop called Cheeky Peach, um, one of my favorite shops. And she was like, yeah, like just take on social media, like take some pictures. These pictures were horrible. Um, they had so much filter on them. The person looked, just did not look great, but people still liked it. But I don't know where those pictures are anymore. Um, I'm going to find those and show you of like what to do and what not to do <laughs> for social media. But you definitely want to make sure that you know you're going to invest in the right tools for the job. So before you choose a platform, before you choose a company, before you choose anyone to work with, you know, your employees, maybe, you know, you've got to figure out some things, you know, some questions to ask yourself about when I'm going to work with this platform, I'm going to work with this program. What should I expect? What do I need to be doing? All right. So before you choose a platform, some things that you need to run through. What are your specific needs for the next six months? You know, does the tool meet those specific needs and either at its free level or introductory level? Now, most of the time they will be free, but also at the same time, that's going to be like a month or so. And then, you know, it's going to be time to kind of figure out, are you going to stay with it or are you not? Um, the best way to do this is maybe there's a week program, maybe there's a week trial. Uh, maybe there's a month, but really make sure if you're going to do the trial, at least like dig into it. Don't just have a trial and just forget about it. You know, don't just set it and forget it. This isn't a crock pot. Um, you know, we're definitely making sure that you're getting the most out of your platform. So use it or lose it, you know, and what are the expected needs for the next two years? You know, we're measuring in quarters and sprints, but now we have to think about years. You know, definitely make sure you're doing so. How much time are you investing in the work manually? Ask yourself right now. Is someone currently doing, you know, the social media work for me? Am I hire? Did I hire someone? You know, if they are, what exactly are they doing? How much time are they investing? Um, and is there another person on your team who could do the work at a lower cost in the tool? But when you think about that, that's where it comes, you know, the cost, will it cost you quality? So that's the other thing you have to look at. You know, what advantages does the tool give your business and what do the reviews say? So one thing that you want to do is maybe you want to use something like this. This is called Over. Um, you can also use a site called Canva as well. Um, with, with Over, with Canva, they're great sites, but it's just really helping you come up with better content. And the reason why I say this is it's just going to take time off your plate and thus making social media easier for your business. So right here, you can take control of your branding from anywhere. You When you come into the to the platform it asks you questions you come up with your colors you can look at your own fonts and you stick to that and it helps you create posts and so that way you're not sitting here like how does this business create these great graphics how do they do this amazing overlay over their products over canva really make sure that you're looking into the platforms that can work for you that's gonna take the time off your shoulders and you know get you back to what you love to do and that's working in your business maybe that's taking that vacation but these will help free up your time, more importantly, help you stay connected and on trend and on point more consistent with your brand as well. Hootsuite, if you're not using this, I suggest using this. As a prior social media manager and working in PR, using Hootsuite is amazing. Um, but one thing I will say is there beats nothing than going actually into the real platform and scheduling your content. But if you're going to use something, use Hootsuite to schedule it out. Um, more importantly, also take a dig into those analytics and those metrics um, and also see like how those posts are doing. So you definitely want to make sure, like let's say you have a busy week. Is 
let's say it's restaurant week, you know, you're slammed. You don't have time to be worrying about posts. The only thing you have time for is to worry about your Instagram stories. That's all you should be worried about that week. So go ahead and um, pre-schedule posts, leave in some posts for you to, you know, upload some little things. Maybe you want an award, you know, maybe um, you saw something really cool. You know, maybe you did like a little behind the scenes interview with your staff during restaurant week. You know, definitely make sure that you leave space for those as well. Develop relationships and partnerships. I love this section because I feel like we've come a long way when we work with influencers, when we work with ambassadors, or we actually use our customers' user-generated content. It's super important to make sure that, that we're not just doing all the work ourselves. We can't. If you're doing all this yourselves, then kudos to you. But, you know, no one asks for help. I'm, like, actually learning how to do that as well right now. So we're all in that same boat. But definitely lean into your content creators. The people that visit your restaurant the most, is there a family that comes into your restaurant? You know, maybe they order a specific menu items. Maybe it's easy for their family. You know, get in contact with them. Say, hey, we see that you order this all the time. Is there a specific reason? You know, um, is it easier for your family? You know, what makes you come to our restaurant? Dive into that. Maybe you can create a family special for families that come into your business. Develop relationships and partnerships, you know, not just with influencers, but with your customers and your future audience members. The three R's, reach, relevancy, relationship. Should probably take this advice and like use this in my personal life for my relationships, <laughs> but you definitely wanna make sure the reach. Um, their size of their following. You know, does this person have a great following? And at the end of the day, I'm gonna be honest with y'all, a person could have 500, they could have 5 million. Some people also could buy your, could buy followers. Don't do that, please. <laughs> do not buy followers, but have an organic reach. Definitely make sure that you have real customers backing your brand and your business. Next, how, you know, is this person going to be relevant? You know, is this um, content creator relevant to your business? Are they a lifestyle creator? Do they just talk about restaurants? Um, have they done a lot of work with your competition, possibly? Relationship. I'm not talking about the relationship that you would have with them. I'm talking about the relationship in the sense they have with the community online, whether that's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Yelp, Google. You definitely want to make sure they have a quality relationship with their audience online. So, for instance, we're going to look at Coco, um, A Taste of Coco. She is an awesome food blogger here. She's an awesome food blogger and author. Her hashtag is hashtag Coco's Guide to Austin. She's in the New York Times renovating a new house. Hashtag Austin, Texas. Um, and so she gives you like a layout of like her highlights of what's going on. Um, but the other great thing is she has a great reach. She's really engaged with her followers. And she really gets down into the nitty gritty and explains like what's going on in Austin. So she says a new donut shop um, and also with the cutest little flower wall, Lola's Donuts. Only open three days a week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Got donuts from here. They're pretty good. Um, and they're kind of hard to get as well because they usually sell out. So that's why you have to make sure you get them. And it's a very Instagramable place as well. But this is just her promoting it, but also giving some details as well. So definitely making sure that you're linking up with that influencer, that brand ambassador. Maybe it's a customer that you see coming to your business every single day. You know, make them feel special. You know, say, hey, you come here all the time. Do you mind like, posting about us or if you do post us let us know tag us in it and we'd love to reshare on our social media sites so really making sure that they feel a part of your brand but more importantly they feel a part of your community as well um, being a part of your business and your brand is one thing but being a part of a community that's something else because you because you really feel like you truly belong there and you really feel like you know that's your family so you definitely want to make sure you're creating that sense of community on your social media sites and this is just another great example. Authentic taco trucks at a gas station in Austin. So just a few taco places. And, you know, I do intense taco research every weekend for you guys to let us know if you want the deets. So as you can see, she's not, you know, she gets a lot of food and free fun in Austin says we want the details. We second, what does your research tells us? So, you know, definitely making sure you're engaging with your community or at least liking some of their um, things as well. But definitely making sure that you're looking at the right influencers and the right people to actually work with for your local business. You want to make sure that you're doing that. All right. So focusing your attention on your results. I know that we always can't be worried about the results, the end goal, because if we do, we're going to drive ourselves nuts. 
We're not going to be sane. We're going to be like over committing to things. We're going to burn out. But at the end of the day, you know, we got to check up on things. You know, this isn't like a crock pot. You can't just really set it and forget it. You got to do a couple of things to it. So you definitely want to make sure that you're going to focus your attention on your results. You're going to do some homework. I kind of want that to be everyone's homework from today. I'm not like telling you what to do. But if you would like, I definitely encourage all of you to look at your metrics and your analytics later today if you can on your social media sites. Um, your results are just going to give you a great insight on what on what's working for your business and what's not working for your business. So just like in this example right here, this is my Instagram page, um, Jeffrey with a G. Um, I went over to my insights. You can clearly click right over to that tab as well. And just merely looked at my insights, lost some followers, gained some people. That doesn't matter. Um, what I'm looking at, and especially if I'm a small business, I consider myself a brand, personal brand. Um, but you definitely want to make sure that you're looking at um, the ages that are on here. So right now, I know that my big age group is 25 to 34, 57% women, 43% men. Actually, I haven't checked this in a while. Um, it's a little bit outdated, but I'm going to check this right now live um, while we're on here. So really quick, I'm just pulling up my Instagram right now. And you can easily do this. So you just follow along like I do right here. But if you go to your business profile and you click on insights, like you can see right here, And then they just, this just actually shows me like all of my insights. So if y'all don't mind, like I'm going to actually like kind of read from my phone. Um, so recently I received like a plus 2,450% more content interactions the last seven days. Um, so 775 accounts reached, 255 account interactions. Um, so I did one post. and it got 743 impressions. So that's pretty good. Uh, my last post was 797, but the year before was at 904. Um, and then I recently did stories. So like I told you, I did that story a little bit earlier. Um, it was seen by 178 people. What were the metrics from that? 25 people took actions from that story. Um, 180 people that, um, were impressed by that story. Um, navigation, 199, but 25 replies. So 25 people actually took action and actually responded back to my story that I posted at, what time was this? Definitely wanna make sure I'm giving you something live as well, four hours ago. So just really interesting to kind of see, but you can definitely see like um, the interaction. But yeah, this was just a simple post that I did, just simple and easy. And the thing is, it's in the moment content. It was something that that was just me. So definitely make sure that you do that. And also making sure that you're also checking your Facebook analytics as well. So making sure you're get, getting into it, your page views, your actions on the page. But all in all, you know, if you're not setting your metrics and, you know, you're kind of repeating what you've done in the past. And, and while you might be thinking it's working, you know, you could dig a little bit deeper and see how you can improve on that just to make it better, you know, add a little bit of umph to the try. Try umph. Okay, there we go. So make customer service first. Um, growing up, my parents were like, you don't have to get a job, but I worked in retail, I worked in restaurants. I remember my first restaurant job. I walked out, my dad wanted me to quit, I didn't. Of course, in restaurants, like, you know, you have to start doing what everybody else does, and that's washing dishes. Um, so that's what I started. I started as a dishwasher. And it's my first restaurant job, I was so excited. My dad comes to pick me up, I'm like 13 at the time. He's like, nope. He's like, you gotta quit. And I was like, why? And he's like, you're covered and I'm like well you know that happens but I slowly worked my way up to like a waiter and then eventually went to retail and then worked my way back into um, the hospitality industry you know bartending and also being a server as well so that thing that you always hear you know the customers always right you have to take that same kind of customer service retrospect and put that into your social media sites but you also have to know when to defend and apologize as well it's kind of like you have to be witty but you also have to be tactful at the same time. So witty and tactful, but also honest. So right here, as you can see, I'm searching for a barbecue restaurant, search for Franklin barbecue. This is what your customers, this is what they're seeing first. And remember, if they search you know, on their desktop like I did, or if you're searching on your phone, 
or you ask your phone, hey, can you pull up barbecue restaurants? They're gonna do it. And they're gonna be pulling from Google My Business, they're gonna be pulling from Yelp. And you wanna make sure that everything is claimed, optimized, and ready to go. Remember, this is sometimes your customer's first chance at getting a good glimpse at your business. And remember, we're painting that experience, you know, we're sweeping that welcome rug, you know, we're putting those tulips, we're putting those flowers out front, and we're turning on that open sign. So definitely making sure that your review sites, your social media sites, your website has that overall great first impression, making a great first experience for your audience as well. And as you can see, update where you can, over communicate where you can, and just letting your audience know what's constantly going on, whether that's your health score, whether you accept Apple Pay, whether you um, have some COVID-19 updates, whether you're only open certain days of the week or you already have your 2021 holiday dates already solidified, let your audience know exactly what's going on, what's happening. Be ahead of the curve. You know, you're putting these things out there as little breadcrumbs, as I like to say, as like putting that seed in your customer's mind. All right, I know Franklin's is closed the day before Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving and Christmas day. So if I wanna get certain foods in, I have to make sure I'm planning accordingly. If I have friends coming in, I know I can do X, Y, and Z. So definitely making sure that if you're a planner like me or if you're a planner like anybody that like I know, you're making sure that you're getting those people as well. Right here, just looking at this example really quickly, so definitely wanna make sure we have time to dive into some questions. Um, respond to your negative reviews, but all in all, respond to all of your reviews. Just like you respond to your comments. If I said, you know, hey Dan, this restaurant was great. Can't wait to come back. It was amazing. Like, we'll come back again. You wouldn't just walk away from it unless you just were just really super busy, I understand. But at the same time, you want to make sure you're effectively communicating, remember, with everyone. And remember, Dan's not just responding to Jeff. He's responding to everyone that wants to go to RJ Gators and Sumter Landing. So he said, my wife and, my wife and I had lunch yesterday. He put the date as well. He wanted everybody to know at RJ Gators in Sumter Landing. We were seated in a booth across the bar, which I assumed would have regular waiter or waitress, but didn't. We insisted the bartender as our waitress. The service was extremely slow and the waitress bartender was unfriendly and not very attractive. So every, I feel like everyone that's worked in the hospitality industry, like you know that's gonna happen. The bartender's not only manning the bar, but they're also taking care of those tables around there as well. Probably thinking they should be a little bit faster. Let's just get busy, especially when people probably haven't been out in a while and they wanna get some food, they wanna feel connected, it's gonna be slammed. So my wife ordered a well-done burger with a sauce on the side. The sauce was not put on the side. I'm like thinking about Ratatouille right now. I might have to watch that movie tonight. When she received the finished burger and started eating, she found the center was pink, not cooked completely. Because it was pink in the center, she only ate the edges of the burger. All right, okay. So Jeff had ordered the Hawaiian skewers made with shrimp. The dish was, it was okay. The shrimp was overcooked tough, the plantains, but overall he says on top of all this, the service to the order was slow waiting 10 to 15 minutes to even place our order. Maybe she thought you were looking up the menu. He thought, I mean, you never know. Soft drinks never be refilled. They go on and on. So Dan says, Jeff, the best and the, the right thing to do is to always dress people by their first name. You know, like when somebody gives you a comment, I'm like, well, what's your name? That's usually like the first thing I ask, well, who are you? Um, <laughs> they have it right there, put it back into the feedback. Jeff, I'm sorry to hear the service, service and food, you received during your visit wasn't up to your expectations. Adjust, adjusting, addressing the issue head on, not skirting around it, getting right to it. Tasty dishes and a quality dining experience are things we aim to bring to every customer, but it's clear we missed the mark. Defending and apologize all at the same time in one sentence. Everyone here would love to welcome you back in the future so we can bring you the experience you can expect. Leave an open line of communication. That's Michelle Rayborn, general manager. Engage with your negative reviews, but also engage with the positive reviews. Spread that love around. Make sure everyone's having a great day. Chelsea left an outstanding review and the business owner said, hi, Chelsea. If you came to the restaurant more frequently than as is, people would think we're related, LOL. You know, make it fun, make it authentic. You don't always have to use, you know, proper grammar, you don't have to, but make it fun, make it exciting, make it engaging. We're really excited for you to have stuck here in Rochester. Who said nothing gonna come out of the crazy 2020? Wish you a great 2021. Simple, easy. So I know we went over a lot of great content today. I know you probably have a lot of questions. Cannot wait to answer those questions as well. Um, but we first went over how to build your brand. We then went over how to use quarters and sprints to plan your marketing. 
but also remember, bucket your content into shareable content, savable content, and content that people are gonna comment on. Invest in the right tools for the job. Like I said, use Over or Canva to really simplify that content. It's gonna save you time, but also, if you're the person on the run, you know, literally from meeting to meeting, you know, maybe filling in someone's shift, use Hootsuite to start scheduling out that content or go into the platform natively and schedule that way. Develop relationships and partnerships. And I think this goes well beyond just what I was just talking about. Develop relationships with your customers, more meaningful ones, but also develop more partnerships with influencers, ambassadors, and frequent customers. Focus your attention on results. Remember, don't get too wound up into it and because you're going to go crazy. You're going to end up buying followers. And I want you all to get that organic traction. I want this to be real. Um, and last but not least, make customer service first. You're trained in customer service, one of the first things that we're all trained in. Um, we're there to make everyone's experience even better than what they're setting it out to be. So that's what we want to do, not only in person, but also on social. So just want to say thank you all for attending, but let's jump into some questions. Um, any questions that you might have that could be related to social, um, your website, anything like that, please let me know. Jeffrey, thank you so much. We have a ton of questions, so I'm hoping we can try to get through as many as possible. I'll try to um, merge a couple that are similar as well. Um, the first one that, that seems to be of interest that we've gotten a few on is, uh, do you legally have to ask permission before sharing guest picks slash do you need to get permission to share a customer's content that they tag you in? So it depends. If it's on Twitter, no. If it's your Instagram story, you're usually not going to, but you're going to get a direct message, like a DM sent to your inbox on Instagram, and it's going to let them know that, hey, you've been tagged or a notification that you've been tagged in a photo. Once you see it, usually just go in there and just say, hey, do you mind if we borrow this picture or use this picture? on our stories or to upload for content later, they're gonna say yes. Um, but at the same time, when you do that, you're creating something that's gonna be real there. You're creating that connection. That customer, you might've never met before. So next time that customer comes in, they're like, oh yeah, you use my picture on your Instagram photo. Oh my gosh, that's you. You know, they're gonna probably take another picture with you, a selfie, put it on their Instagram story and boom, bam. You know, that's just creating a longer conversation for you. So you're gonna notice um, a, something that's trending, uh, well, I don't think it's trending, but a lot of these tactics that I'm giving y'all are having you go back and forth with your customers. That's because um, right now you don't have to really pick your pick your customers' brains. You can just ask them right there. So use that opportunity to ask them questions as well. Ask them how their visit was. You know, really lean into that to also gain feedback as well. Not just for you to get content, but this is also a chance for you to gain feedback. Fantastic. Um, and on the note of user generated content how do you increase user generated content ah so a great way to do so is remember the first section when i showed you at the end about paperboy and they had their instagram platform right there they could have went a little step further we all can and put our branded hashtag and say hey when you're in our restaurant or you have takeout or you have delivery don't forget to tag us or if you visit us tag us at and so that way you're remember your customers they don't know what to do you have to put um you have to put yourself in that driver's seat and really drive them to do what you want them to do as weird and josie and the pussycats as that sounds um you definitely want to make sure that you are leading them to do that so make sure they know what to tag you in how to tag you and they have that hashtag because if they don't they're going to start one without you and you're going to be left out of that conversation and that's going to be kind of awkward you know so definitely make sure that you're navigating that conversation and you're a part of that conversation Okay, so on the note about hashtags, we've got three that are somehow involved. We've got, I am hashtag illiterate, how are they used? Um, what is the best way to find out what's trending and how do you find relevant hashtags? Okay, so all key questions, all questions that anyone could have. Um, no one's hashtag illiterate, it's just no one explained it in a way that possibly you understood. So I want you to think of hashtags as a filing cabinet system. And I'm gonna use hashtag ATX Eats. That's hashtag ATX EATS. And I want you all to pull out your Instagram, pull out your phone. So I want us to go to, I want you to go to your Instagram profile. As you can see, there's a little pop right here. 
I want you to go to the search bar down here, the little magnifying glass. And I want you to type, or you can go over to tags. And I want you to do hashtag ATX eats, A-T-E-S. So one of the first things that you're going to notice is ATX eats has 289,000 posts. ATX Eats and Treats, 6.7 thousand posts. It goes on and on. The way that you're going to find out what's trending is looking at something like this. If you're in the hospitality industry and you're able to abbreviate your city or your state, anything like that, put that in there and put Eats on there or put Diner. So put the abbreviation of your city or your state and put Diner or Traveler. That's how you're going to find out what's trending. Um, another way to do so is just literally Google what's, what are trending hashtags for the hospitality industry in 2021 or um, what's trending in my local area. Another way to find out what's local is maybe do hashtag your, I almost said, yeah, hashtag your zip code or hashtag your area code. That's another quick way of finding out what's trending. And when you start seeing like food pictures or like drink pictures, start clicking on those. And if they're from another business, remember, I don't want you to get discouraged. Don't think you're stealing. Don't think you're copying. Know that you're learning. You're studying your competition, but at the same time, you're also studying what might have worked for them and might, what didn't work for them. And also keep in mind National Margarita Day, National Tequila Day. Um, you have these hashtag holidays that are coming up. Look those up. That's going to be a big way to also use hashtags. So also look up hashtag holidays as well. Okay, so I'm not sure if you'll know the answer to this one, but it seems <laughs> relevant. It says, what can you do if your personal Facebook account gets hacked and you get kicked out and you are the administrator for your business account. Yeah, so if that happens, you're gonna have to get help. Um, I don't know the exact link or hotline, but Facebook can actually help you try to get access back into that. Um, it's just gonna take some time. Um, but yeah, there is a way that to getting around that. Like Facebook, I will say it has really good customer service. Okay. I've worked there before, but I do have friends that work there and it's really good as well, so. Good customer awesome. service there. And what do you recommend for an Instagram bio? Like how many lines would you use? Oh, yes, love Instagram bios. Short and sweet and to the point, um, but don't overcrowd it. You know, it's like a social distance party, but a party where everyone brought their own dishes, but also their own plates and stuff as well. So you wanna pack information in there, but you wanna make sure, remember, you're steering that wheel into the right direction. So number one, if you have multiple locations, make sure that's in the bio somewhere. If you can add emojis by those locations, whether that's Texas, Georgia, Seattle, you would add little emojis next to those, do so make it fun, make it interesting. If you have more than one thing going on for your business, whether that's reservations, events, um, charities that you work with, maybe you're hiring currently, get a link tree and have multiple links linked into that. That way you can use that CTA, that call to action, for a better use. Remember, you got to work smarter, not harder. And also at the same time, how long you've been in business, um, what's special about your business as well, and also do you have a current hashtag people should be using? That's what I would put in my bio. Okay, and we've got, with one more minute, I think this is pertinent. Someone, right. someone saw a documentary about influencers, and ultimately to sum up the question, um, how do you... How do you reconcile the fact that you strongly suggest in your presentation not to buy followers, although these influencers seem to be doing so and are clearly making money off of the postings for different brands they represent? Got it. We can answer this question. So that documentary is fake famous. Definitely suggest you all watch it on HBO Max if you have it. Um, it's great. It's where they take three people like all of us. They buy them followers and they test them out. Only one girl really succeeded because she actually used it to, um, she worked smart with it. So this is how I'll tell you how to do that. You, you don't want to buy your followers um, because then it doesn't create engagement. They're not going to leave comments. And if they do, people can trace it back to like a fake profile. So don't do that. Um, and the reason why influencers are doing that is to start working more with brands or businesses like you. So when we all think, oh, it's hard for us to work with influencers, it's the other way around. It's hard for influencers to work with restaurants because y'all are unique, unique and y'all are special. Every influencer wants to tell your story, but only certain influencers are going to tell it right. So that's why I always suggest telling your story authentically and being picky with who you choose. 
but um but no don't buy the followers um don't do that because it's not going to be good it's not gonna be credible and it'll end up i think hurting your engagement in the long run it'll make you seem more fake than actually famous or legit okay well that's all the time we have thank you so much for your presentation jeffrey um, again, we're at the end of our time, so we'd like to thank our audience for joining and, of course, GoDaddy for presenting this session. Um, Jeffrey gave a fantastic introduction, so I wasn't able to tell anyone that there will be a recording of this session uh, made yes. available in the coming days, um, so take a look out for that. Um, but again, thank you all so much for attending. Thank you, Jeffrey, for another amazing presentation, and have a yes. fantastic day. Thanks. Bye, everyone.